What's up guys, Noor here and welcome to Book of Showtime Chapter 32. As always, if you guys have a topic you'd like for me to cover for Book of Showtime, be sure to leave it in the comment section down below or anywhere you can reach me on social media or the Book of Showtime Discord. So back in Chapter 24, we tried out the Daymare 1994 Sandcastle demo and it was very good. And on Monday the 14th, a store near me broke street and began selling the game. This was huge to me for a couple of reasons. One, I've been waiting for more survival horror games to come out, especially after I finished Dead Space back in early July. I really had like a survival horror kick going on. I really love this genre, it's one of my favorites. So getting Daymare 94 two weeks early was really cool, but that also meant that I could put out my first true review chapter. Now there are sites and places you can go to request review keys, but Book of Showtime, this channel started back in January and I really don't have the base to be in a position to request review keys, so anything I can use to get a head start is very important to me because I don't like to review games in full until I beat it. You take a game like Signalis, which I covered earlier this year, it had a strong first half and then to me completely fell apart after a few hours. So today's chapter will be my full opinion on the entire game start to finish. Now its predecessor, Daymare 1988, it had some jank, including some game-breaking bugs in which the game-breaking bugs were like halfway through the game and I don't think they're fixed on PC as of this recording. So this was a concern of mine playing this game before a day one patch, but the prospect of a day one review chapter was too high for me to pass up. Now aside from a few cutscenes, I experienced virtually no issues with the gameplay. It ran perfectly, I had no hiccups, it was awesome. But then the last 40 minutes of the game were clearly not finished and now I see why the devs advised against me playing the game, and I see why they were upset with copies of the game getting out early. It seems the publisher rushed these out, and even weirder, if you have a physical copy, I'll even show you some pictures of mine. Invader Studios isn't anywhere on the packaging, which, that's just straight up extreme disrespect to them. Daymare is a great series, Invader, they work very hard on it, they're very passionate about what they do. So for them to just not be on the cover of this game, that's just, I don't, it doesn't sit right with me. So I technically had finished the game start to finish. I was still withholding judgment until the day one patch. I even saved multiple states so that I can jump back in and experience certain points that might change. And man, did the patch change a lot in the end. The ending is actually a lot better. There's some big differences. And I actually played some other parts too, just to see what has changed. But like I mentioned earlier, aside from some cutscenes being messed up, the build of the game I played had zero gameplay bugs, zero, which is pretty amazing. And the graphics, the facial animations, the lighting, all these things are much improved over 1998, even more so with the day one patch. In fact, go back and watch the video again and take a shot every time I say day one patch. The one thing that's mostly a non-issue as far as graphics go is I didn't really like the locations or the locale, as the kids say, as much as I did in 1998. When you play Daymare 1998, you're in all types of locations, and with Sandcastle, you're just kind of in this big military base, this big military complex, and while, you know, it's it's not like it's poorly designed or anything, it's just, it doesn't look as attractive, but, you know, it's not a major issue, I look the other way on that. Now, as far as actually playing the game goes, Daymare 94 really wasn't that hard. I played on normal, and there were a few spots that jammed me up, but I felt like ammo was never really an issue, and the health packs feel extremely generous. In fact, that's actually why I had as many deaths as I did. I would try to take my health down as low as I can to get the most out of healing. The final boss was, you know, it was a thing. You know, that last stretch was alarmingly pedestrian, and Daymare 1998 fumbled its boss fight too. The enemy design was mundane, there were only three types of enemies, and one could instant kill you, which that's where most of my deaths came from. But this was a very rinse and repeat game when it came to encounters. Most encounters were just maybe you fight two enemies and after you kill them, two more would spawn. There's also only two weapons, but after playing for about two hours, the way you used the submachine gun and the shotgun in tandem with the new frost grip, it made sense to me. This was a solid and safe design choice, and there really wasn't a place for more weapons. The scanner is a new feature in Daymare 1994, and it doesn't feel like it really matters. You only use it for files. If this was something like Resident Evil Revelations where enough scans would reward you, that would be really cool, but I'm not really a collectibles guy, although the collectible aliens in Daymare 94 are pretty cool, though. So I might be a little bit of a hypocrite, but otherwise, though, the scanner feature was, it felt, I don't want to say useless, but that's kind of the feeling that I, it had. It's just, it felt like they wanted to have something else just for the sake of having something else in the game. The lack of a map hurts a tiny bit too, but this game is also pretty linear and I don't feel like you spend enough time in each section to justify a map, although in some parts it would have helped a little bit with some of the minute backtracking you'll encounter. 
the story is it's there you know it's a story it's very 90s game cheesy and corny and it did get a little ridiculous down the stretch which i assume that's what they're going for with these games but it is enough to carry you through the six hours or so of zombie killing i feel that some of the cutscenes they stretch a little too long you know the story is not engrossing enough for these cutscenes to be as long as they were and it also exposes the pedestrian voice acting too much none of these characters are that interesting either at least compared to the 1998 cast I felt that Raven and Sam from the first game, they had some depth to them, but Reyes and her associates, however, kind of generic and bland people. They just, they no, none of them are memorable to me. Reyes, she started to grow on me as time went on, but otherwise I really couldn't buy into her story. Though if you play the first game, there is a really neat post credit scene, so look out for that. The story though, it's solid, it's serviceable, but it's nothing to write home about. As far as the sequel factor goes, yes, I'm aware this is a prequel, but this is still the second game in the series. I am a bit disappointed that the little things that made Daymare 1988 stand out to me aren't in Daymare 1994, especially the reload mechanic, because I feel like it added some tension to the game, and in any horror game, tension is the most important element. But I actually might be like one of six people who like that mechanic, so maybe that's why it's not back. I also feel that there aren't many puzzles and they aren't as hard when they show up, though they are pretty fun. I like doing the override pose and I have some fun clips I'll post on my personal Twitter of me going through those. I feel that like the issues that I had with Damon 1998, which were the inconsistent difficulty and the weak final boss, in fact in this game there really isn't any boss fights, just high leverage encounters, those weren't changed. Any game, no matter what difficulty you play on, it should scale as time goes on because you're going to get better as you play the game more, so I feel like the difficulty should always scale in any game. The first Daymare also had some bonus modes come later as DLC, this might be the case with 94 as well. I feel like it should have launched with some bonus modes, I was crossing my fingers that the day one patch would add in some bonus modes, but nope, it's just you play the game once and if you want you can play it again for the collectibles or if you use the unlockable rewards which are just infinite ammo. There's really nothing that incites me to play the game again anytime soon. I am crossing my fingers for some DLC down the line though if the game performs well enough. I do enjoy playing these type of games. This is also a much shorter game with my runner clocking in at around five and a half hours give or take which some of that was just standing around waiting for my frost grip to recharge whereas my 1998 run that was close to nine hours when I finished. Now 1998 you did play as three characters this game you just had one so I can cut 1994 a break but I do wish the game was a little longer but then again I feel in this day and age a lot of people complain that games aren't long enough and that they're too short. I never feel that games are too short. I feel like they can end abruptly, but they're never too short. I feel like there's so many time sinks nowadays. Games like Daymare, this game is you can beat in under six hours. This is a beautiful game. I like it for that. <laughs> I love my short games. I love my short survival horror games. All in all, Daymare 1994 Sandcastle, while a very solid game, is a very two steps forward, one step back kind of game. I feel the gameplay, graphical improvements, and technical state of the game were good, but the story is flat. And while I like the improvements that are existent, Invader could have and should have done a lot more with this game. I'm going to be giving Damer 94 a 6.5 out of 10. If you played 1998 and liked it, you'll like this one too. If you play Resident Evil games, you'll like this. And with October on the horizon, this is a very solid survival horror game that I think is worthy of giving a try. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you played Daymare 1984, let me know what you think down below. Inshallah, I will see you in the next chapter.